president, uh, that increased to 60%. And also, and I won't go into the details, but there were other aspects of that renationalization of oil uh, that had important implications. So that 2007, 2008, there's a new phase or new stage in which the government carries out a banner, the banner of state control of basic industry, which was nothing new, which actually went back to the 1930s when nationalistic movements started calling for state control of oil and state control of basic industry. And that was actually incorporated, that ideal was incorporated in the Constitution of 1961 and supported by all the establishment political parties. So that, and then it was reaffirmed in the 1999 Constitution. So that what Chavez was doing with the expropriations, even though the opposition uh, has been a, a opposed to the expropriations um, in general, uh, Chavez was really um, uh, carrying out what the political parties had been calling for, at least supporting in theory, uh, during, extended, during an extended period of time. And then, uh, 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 now I've lost track, one, two, three, four, a fifth stage um, would be the expropriation of companies, uh, smaller companies or medium-sized companies and some bigger companies, but not in the area of basic industry. And this uh, uh, is in reaction to a dynamic that has been going on <coughs> since the general strike in 2002, namely the problem of shortages. The response of the Chavez government has been expropriation uh, in order to create a situation of what you could call a mixed economy, at least in certain important sectors, and especially food, food processing and food distribution and uh, distribution uh, in general, uh, in which the state sector is competing with the private sector in order to um, uh, impede or hold back this strategy of creating shortages uh, in part for political reasons. Um, and so I'd like to go into that in a little bit, in, 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 in more detail because it's the most current stage. Um, and I'd like to go into that also because I think it becomes evident that this process of change in Venezuela uh, is complex. It's not on the basis of a blueprint or the imposition of a model that the Chavez government um, is uh, you know, deciding this is what we're gonna do because we're moving in the direction of socialism uh, and this is what we're going to do now because uh, we've got this ultimate objective, which is socialism, and this road to socialism is a straight kind of road. Uh, we're moving in that direction. And regardless of what the, cor what the correlation of forces are, or even if their argument is that the correlation of forces is favorable, and therefore we're going to go ahead with these decisions, with these measures, that are moving things in a socialist direction. I maintain that it's more complex than that. In other words, that it's not that the government is imposing socialism, it's that the government has socialism in mind, but there's a complex situation, and the government, in many ways, is reacting to the tactics of the enemy. That's not what the opposition says in the face of these expropriations, expropriations in food processing, and in other areas as well. But basically, what the Wall Street Journal says, and what the Venezuelan opposition says, is that this is about power, that the government is trying to limit the power of the private sector in the, in the political opposition, because one of the arguments is that if the workers work for the private sector, that uh, provides the opposition with the opportunity to organize those workers, but if they're working for the state sector, then they're probably gonna be managed, manipulated, uh, in control by the state. So that for political reasons, the government is carrying out these expropriations. But not only, that's one argument. The other argument is that Chavez is imposing socialism, Cuban style, on Venezuela, and that's why he's taking over, taking over all these companies. He wants to uh, eliminate capitalism and copy the Cuban 
blueprint to keep in mind. But in order to, to understand these expropriations, um, we have to really go back to the general strike in 2002, 2003, which was a traumatic experience mm -hmm. for Venezuelans because it went on for as long as it did, two months. And um, oil production went down to practically zero. Venezuela had to import oil from Brazil. And uh, there were shortages of, of um, uh, basic products. Uh, and there were shortages of beer. That was, became a big thing. And the Chavistas say, you know, anything, you know, we'll accept anything other than this. <laughs> One of their joking comments. Uh, uh, but there were shortages of, of basic and non-basic commodities uh, for two months. The, in the aftermath of the general strike, the government uh, realized that with these shortages that prices were going up in accordance with the law of supply and demand. If you didn't have enough supply, prices are going to go up. And so in February, the general strike ended in January. In February of 2003, the government implemented um, uh, price controls on basic commodities. Um, and I would say that the shortages which have occurred as a result of those price controls, according to the opposition, it's that the companies just don't have the incentive. The prices are basically too low. They don't have the incentive to invest. Uh, they also say that every time the, the Venezuelan government has implemented price controls in the past prior to Chavez, it's always resulted in the same kind of situation. Uh, Jaime Lucinchi did it in the 1980s. Rafael Caldera, who ran as an anti-neoliberal, did it in the first year and a half that he was an anti-neoliberal, then he became a neoliberal, uh, so that the, at least the two times that it was uh, implemented, uh, or all the times that it was implemented, it has always resulted in shortages and black market and that kind of thing. But the fact of the matter is that there were two things going on. One is the shortages have represented a political tool of the opposition. That the opposition is motivated politically to create these shortages. That's one of the explanations. And the proof of that, in my mind, is that the first time that the problem of shortages presented itself in a big way in the Chavez was during the general strike. They were created for political reasons. The opposition as a matter of fact, it really wasn't a general strike. General strike really is giving, giving the opposition too much credit. It wasn't a strike. It was a lockout. Mm -hmm. And the private sector was, I mean, because the workers showed up. And even though the head of the Trade Union Confederation, um, who is now in exile in Peru, uh, Carlos Ortega, uh, supported the general strike, called the general strike, along with the business sector, the fact of the matter is that the workers showed up and the doors were closed. So. If the opposition really wanted to call it a general strike, they should have allowed the workers to decide whether they wanted to go to work or to stay home. But the workers didn't have any choice in the matter. But in any case, that was politically induced, those shortages during those two months. And in 2007, the shortages were greater than any time since the general strike. Since January of 2003, seven years have gone by, eight years have gone by, um, the shortages were most acute in 2007, 2007. And why did that situation present itself in 2007? Because in December of 2007, um, a referendum was held. And the opposition in the private sector considered the proposal, which was 69 uh, articles uh, that were being um, added to the Constitution, a constitutional reform, 